My name is Matej Markota. And I'm uh, uh, Michael Bastwick. Okay. And we're two out of four authors of an article called Benzodiazepine Use in Older Adults, Dangers, Management, and Alternative Therapies. We're both also members of the Department of Psychiatry at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. So, Dr. Makota, you're the first author on this paper, and I'm curious what inspired you to uh, dig into this set topic. So the idea to dig into this topic came um, when I first started my residency. I started off on a geriatric psychiatry unit um, and there I've noticed that pretty much every woman um, over the age of 65 that was admitted um, was also um, receiving benzodiazepines um, usually for a very prolonged um, period of time. Um, most people in our unit were of the opinion that um, they were not benefiting from these medications, but then once we wanted to um, taper them off of benzodiazepines, we ran into this problem of, well, what other medications should we use and how do we taper them off? And uh, while you primarily saw this problem in women, you would probably agree that it's an issue for women and men. It is, and, and I think the, the, our observations on the units were in line with um, the published literature um, that shows that there are approximately twice as many women on um, um, benzodiazepines. When you, when you delved into this topic, what did you learn about uh, why they were being used and what the risks and uh, benefits were of using them? Right. One, one of the things that we did in this article was to um, look into what are, what are some of the barriers to discontinuing benzodiazepines for um, physicians um, in the context of this good awareness of their da dangers, but um, no changes in prescription patterns over the past decade. Um, and some of the, the biggest barriers seem to be um, that uh, physicians tend to think that there are, there are no other effective alternatives to benzodiazepines for insomnia and for anxiety in this population. Um, and the second barrier is the same barrier that we ran into, uh, which is, well, what are the protocols that we can use? What are the tapering protocols um, that are out there that have been tested and are effective? The percentages of, of patients that can be successfully and quite easily tapered off of benzodiazepines is um, pretty high. Um, so there's definitely um, a merit to um, educating patients and at least um, trying to taper them off. Um, and I think that physicians are um, surprised um, by how many patients can pretty easily and successfully be tapered off. So we have a very um, clear um, tapering protocol that was um, sent to us and previously published by Dr. Tannenbaum. Um, and it, it's, it's um, a 22 weeks long tapering protocol. It's so slow. It, it's, it's fairly slow. And the, the evidence does suggest that um, past tapering protocols are less effective. And I think one po important point that we make is that uh, patients even given um, uh, written information on the dangers and uh, of using these medications will often self-taper. They just simply need to be given the information by their doctor, uh, either in, a, in the form of a letter or, or in person, and they'll go home and stop them themselves. Uh, exactly. And that, that was also one of the barriers um, um, that came up, uh, which is that physicians tend to think that they will have to invest a lot of time um, into convincing patients to taper off of benzodiazepines. Um, and this population tends to have a lot of other medical issues, so that's a huge barrier um, when you have to pick uh, which, which problem to choose. And yes, it, it turns out that just simply um, sending educational materials that are at this point freely available online and everybody can access them, um, just, just sending those materials to patients um, can, can get a lot of people off of benzodiazepines with literally zero investment. We settled, I think, four different high-risk uh, issues to think about um, as a reason to be very careful about prescribing. What were those, or what are those four issues? So the, the first issue that we uh, focused on was cognitive decline, um, and it's been um, pretty consistently shown that not only are patients that are currently on benzodiazepines, they, 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 they tend to have a pretty significant cognitive decline, 
Um, we all, the, the literature also shows that once benzodiazepines start discontinued, um, this cognitive deficit seems to persist for quite a long time. Um, nevertheless, once they are discontinued, um, it does the, the cognitive deficits do seem to improve, so it's still worth um, um, tapering off. The next um, um, set of problems that we um, looked at was the risk of falls and fractures. And there I think the literature is very um, consistent, um, showing that patients over 65 years of age uh, that are on benzodiazepines do run a much higher risk of falls and fractures. And then um, another um, very um, important problem that we looked into was the, the association between benzodiazepines and mortality. And again, it seems that there is a pretty strong association between um, benzodiazepine use and overall mortality. There actually is very little research that yeah. what is known about benzodiazepines is primarily from studies on younger adults, right. and extrapolations really don't work very well. If you had to, uh, to summarize uh, why a person, uh, why a doctor would or should prescribe these meds, um, what would that be? So there, there are a couple of indications um, that even the American Geriatric Society um, recognizes as indications where benzodiazepine use is appropriate. And what they cite is um, some um, REM sleep um, disturbances, um, some seizure disorders, mm -hmm. severe generalized anxiety disorder, not just any generalized anxiety disorder, but severe generalized anxiety disorder, and a few um, fairly rare conditions. But for for the most common um, reasons why people prescribe them, which is um, common anxieties and insomnia, they don't really recommend these medications. Overall then, um, what's your verdict on benzodiazepines and the elderly? What's our verdict? Let's see. <laughs> so our verdict, I think, is um, first of all, benzodiazepine use is, or benzodiazepines are inappropriate medications for most um, older adults. Secondly, um, most chronic older benzodiazepine users can safely be and quite easily be tapered off of benzodiazepines. Um, and thirdly, there are alternative. Um, both pharmacological and non-pharmacological treatment options. Insomnia and anxiety um, can be the leading complaint for a person who actually has a, a major depressive episode going on or has a generalized anxiety disorder. And for both of those conditions, antidepressants are an excellent choice. Mm -hmm. So um, possibly then there is hope if you can re-diagnose your patient, try a comparatively safe antidepressant, to use some sleep hygiene, educate people about maybe this isn't a good idea, and um, things might go pretty well. I think so, too. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.